the idea is to just have that capability with us uh, in case there is a danger in future and it's possible that we might not have uh, might not be uh, there might not be any reason to use it uh, it's uh, also possible that uh, as nasa says in the next 100 years uh, you know there's nothing coming towards us so we might not have to use it at all A NASA spacecraft rammed into an asteroid at lightning speed on September 26. The event marked a dress rehearsal for a doomsday scenario where a killer rock menaces Earth. The collision took place 11 million kilometers away from Earth and the spacecraft named DART crashed into asteroid Dimorphos at a speed of 14,000 miles per hour. This was the first attempt in human history to shift the position of an asteroid or any other natural object in space. The mission cost 325 million dollars. Following the mission, DART scientists call it a success, but added it would take a few weeks to determine how much the asteroid's path had changed. It was a technology demonstration exercise. Uh, what NASA did was to demonstrate its capability to deflect an asteroid uh, from its orbit and this was done mainly as a sort of a preparation exercise a preparatory exercise uh, to uh, you know uh, to show that human beings can deflect uh, an object asteroid uh, if it is headed towards the earth uh, you know asteroids do come towards the earth most of them burn get burnt when once they uh, enter the atmosphere uh, but there is a possibility that large asteroids uh, might come it has happened uh, in the past that these large asteroids come and uh, fall on the earth and cause large scale destruction so it was with this objective that this technology demonstration exercise was used to show that an asteroid practically can be deviated from its orbit and therefore in future if there is something similar happens then that danger from an asteroid can be averted spacecraft was sent last year somewhere uh, around november i think november 23rd uh, if i am not mistaken so uh, that spacecraft has has been traveling through space uh, and this particular uh, asteroid was chosen uh, as the target uh, which would be hit and uh, you know the idea was to deflect it from its orbit and it's not a single asteroid it's a two asteroid system uh, one of them uh, the one which was hit it was it's called dimorphos uh, it circles around a larger uh, uh, asteroid and the two this two body system together revolves around the sun uh, now this this uh, spacecraft which crashed into uh, dimorphos uh, the uh, asteroid this crash happened about 11 million kilometers uh, away from the earth and this is the closest uh, in its orbit that this particular asteroid would have come to the uh, uh, near the earth's surface so all this happened 11 million kilometers uh, away uh, it was under plans for the last like for the last 10 months this spacecraft had been traveling uh, it reached that place today and it went and crashed into the uh, uh, the asteroid now we still uh, i mean the measurements still have to be done as to uh, how much deviation uh, has it caused in the uh, orbit of the uh, uh, asteroid those measurements will have to be done and uh, you know we would come to know about it only later as to what was the impact and by how much uh, did the deviation in the orbit occur but the experiment is supposed to have uh, uh, you know Uh, been completed successfully yes uh, i mean the big ones do pose a lot of uh, uh, dangers uh, there's a there's a 
huge threat. Uh, and in fact, it has happened. So uh, the most famous one probably is the one that happened uh, about 6.5 million years ago. And then we all of us know about it. The dinosaurs went extinct and a lot of other life forms uh, uh, went extinct after a large uh, collision with an asteroid uh, happened. That asteroid uh, fell somewhere uh, around New Mexico and it has left a large crater. It's still there. It was discovered a few years ago. So uh, those kind of things do happen. The possibility of an asteroid coming towards the Earth, a large asteroid, which doesn't completely burn out uh, uh, when it enters the Earth, Earth's atmosphere, that is quite possible. Now, NASA says uh, nothing like that is likely to happen in the next 100 years, uh, but uh, it can happen after that. And even during this period, because we, it's, it's all based on the information that we have right now, uh, the information on different uh, 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 asteroids that are present and uh, uh, revolving the sun uh, and their sizes and their orbits. But there are a large number of objects that we still don't know about. A large number of asteroids that are going around the sun, which, which we don't have information about. So one of these can really surprise us, uh, even in this 100 uh, year period. I mean, what NASA is talking about uh, is saying that of the known asteroids, of those asteroids that we know of now, none of them are likely to come towards Earth in the next 100 years. I mean, the big ones, the small ones keep falling into the Earth's atmosphere almost on a daily basis. Uh, you know, they get burnt in the atmosphere. Those, those do not pose much, much of a danger. The idea is to just have that capability with us. Uh, in case there is a danger in future. And it's possible that we might not have, uh, might not be, uh, there might not be any reason to use it. Uh, it's uh, also possible that uh, as NASA says in the next 100 years, uh, you know, there's nothing coming towards us. So we might not have to use it at all. Uh, and there's a plenty of time for us to, uh, to develop this technology, but it, it's, it's, uh, uh, I mean, deviating it from the orbit was just one of the, uh, I mean, the main objective, uh, uh, of course, but it was also a sort of technology demonstrator for a lot of other applications in space. So that way, uh, you know, it has the, the ability to be able to strike a small, this, this particular asteroid was a relatively small asteroid, just about 160 meters in size. So that ability uh, to strike at, at, at an object in space, a relatively small object in space uh, at very high speeds. So those kind of capabilities have been demonstrated. Uh, they will have plenty of uses, uh, maybe uh, indirect uses as well uh, in our uh, you know, journeys further into space. So that was, there, is, there, there wasn't any direct reason for us to do so right now, but it's a, it's a technology demonstration exercise.